Hey guys, it's Friday, September 9th, and tonight marks the start of Labor Day Rematch Week. The Calgary Stampeders are traveling north to challenge the Edmonton Eskimos in an attempt to avenge a truly embarrassing loss. Now, as I have watched the Red and White play their first half of the season, I have noticed that the running game has been going mostly unused. Joffrey Reynolds had only 13, 13 yards on six carries against Edmonton on Monday. Now, one game can be attributed to stellar defense, but I don't believe he's had a 100-yard game all season long. So I've been racking my brain, trying to figure out why a prolific back is essentially being wasted. And I've realized it's his coordinator. Dave Dickinson, to my recollection, was a passing quarterback. And now, he's a passing coordinator. I've seen most first quarters, and some entire halves go by, with little to no rush attempts. The Stamps have got to let Joffrey do what he does best if they want to continue winning football games. However, the Eskimos have proven that they very well could have his number. I expect that any yards gained on the ground are going to come at a price. Now, as for Henry Burris, well, he was simply a stinker this Monday, and there's really no other way to spin that. After engin engineering a pretty little touchdown drive as the first quarter came to an end, he let himself down by becoming rattled by four-man pressure from the Edmonton defensive front. I've said it before, and I'll have no issue saying it again. I don't believe Henry is an outstanding quarterback. Yes, he knows what he's doing. And yes, when he's on his game, he is red hot, but he's easy to rattle, and I've often seen him let the, let the emotion of a game get the better of him. If he can't keep calm tonight, the Stamps will be going home with a tarnished road record. Now, it may not seem fair to lay all the blame on Burris, but who else can the finger legitimately point to? A lot of the Stamps seem to have an I play for me kind of attitude, and I haven't ever seen any evidence that Coach, Coach Huffnagel has tried to insti instill a team mentality. To me, he appears to be the tenuous string that holds a group of individual players together. Sooner or later, that strategy is going to fail, and I can already see the fault lines appearing in the lack of discipline and unnecessary celebrating. Now on the other sideline, in stark contract to Coach Huff, is Kavis Reed. In my observation, Reed won't let anybody get away with A, trying to become a locker room pivot point that diverts attention from the person who's really in charge, and B, play for themselves. Instead, he's taken what could really be described as a ragtag group and turned them into a hard-working, play-a-team-game collective. Nobody expected, when the team released half of its old players, that the Eskimos would roar out to a 5-0 start, take down the Stampeders twice at McMahon Stadium, and be tied for first place in the West at the midpoint of the season. But Reed knew exactly how to engineer chemistry between the players. He's got his big playmakers in Fred Stamps, Jerome Messam, Ricky Ray, Greg Peach, and Rod Davis, and he knows exactly who to put in with them to ensure everybody feeds off the correct energy. I'm absolutely enthralled by his coaching style, and I think it's going to take the Eskimos a long, long way. Now, yes, Eskimo fans, I did say Fred Stamps. The slotback is making a much-heralded return to the lineup this evening, although the situation is not as desperate as it seemed three weeks ago. Yes, Stamps is an amazing offensive weapon, and yes, his return will be a massive boost. But look at what the Eskimos prove they can do without him. If I'm a Calgary fan right now, I'm quivering at the thought of what his return will mean for the defense. Despite missing three games, Stamps is still sitting 7th in overall reception yards with 619, and he still leads the Eskimos in that same category. He's proven that he is one of the guys everyone else can feed off of, and that kind of energy is exactly what the Eskimos need to carry on with a great season. Now, it's definitely going to be a difficult game. Revenge is on the mind in everyone in red, while the green and gold are looking for their first sweep since 2004. Now, I don't think Henry Burris has fully gotten over A, his poor performance, and B, fan's reaction to it, and I expect the ex Eskimos to exploit his emotions for their own gain. This one's going to go back and forth all night long, but I think the Eskimos come out on top one more time.